This video was made possible by Wix. If you are ready to create a website, head over to wix.com slash go slash infographics to try out one of their premium plans right now. Sometimes when a lot of money gets stolen, we can't help but root for those who took it. We might look at a recent heist that must be the closest thing to a real-life Ocean's Eleven, when a bunch of old men stole millions of dollars worth of precious stones from a vault in London in 2015. It's thought most of the men were arrested, but much of the bounty remains at large. This is regarded as one of the biggest heists in history. We might smile when we hear about these aged robbers, but there's one kind of theft that people almost always take a dim view of, and that is the financial scam. Today we are going to look at the biggest financial scam in history, in this episode of the Infographic Show, The Man Who Stole $65 Billion. Before we talk about how this $65 billion was stolen, let's learn something about the man who took it. His name is Bernie Madoff. Unfortunately for him, he is still alive at the ripe old age of 80. He was born on April 29th, 1938, in Queens, New York. Madoff's roots are European, with his parents having Polish, Austrian, and Romanian heritage. His parents, Ralph and Sylvia, didn't have an easy time of it in New York, especially as they had to live through what is now known as the Great Depression. Ralph was a plumber and Sylvia was a housewife, which didn't exactly afford them luxuries in life. They got involved with finance in the 1960s, but just as the son would later enter the world of dodgy dealings, his parents were at one point shut down by the US Securities and Exchange Commission because Sylvia, whose name was on the company, had failed to file reports of their financial condition. The company was closed, but they didn't have to pay anything in fines or payments to customers. This was 1964, when young Bernie was just 26. It's also said that Ralph owed a lot of money in federal taxes, and perhaps that's why the company was put in Sylvia's name. They both gave up the ghost in the 70s anyway, but there can be no doubt that these two sketchy parents set their son off on a mission to cause financial mayhem. According to reports, it took Madoff some time to get into finance, and like any young buck, he was more interested in girls in sports, mainly swimming. In 1959, he married a girl he had met in high school, and in 1960, he graduated from Hofstra University in Long Island. He started law school, then dropped out of law school, and with $5,000 he had earned as a lifeguard and part-time work installing sprinkler systems, Madoff took his first step into his parents' financial footsteps. On top of the $5,000, he borrowed a further $50,000 and started an investment firm called Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, LLC, perhaps now the most infamous investment firm ever created. The firm looked good from the outside. It was known as a solid market maker. This is described as being a person or a brokerage house that is always prepared to buy and sell securities in order to provide liquidity to the markets, according to the website Investing Answers. In simple terms, they buy when people sell and sell when people buy to keep the cogs turning. They don't buy because the stock goes up, they buy when people sell. This involvement of market traders, according to Investopedia, means traders and investors will make more transactions, and that's good for the market in general. But how do they make cash taking such risks? Well, they charge a little extra when they sell the stock they bought. This is known as a bid-ask spread. That's a basic explanation, because we can't spend too much time on how the stock exchange works. What we do need to get to is how Mr. Madoff made his billions. As we said, he was very well known for his good returns to his clients whose assets he managed. Apparently, that client list included such names as Steven Spielberg and Kevin Bacon. You see, Madoff was seen as a stand-up guy in the financial world. He even helped form the National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations, aka NASDAQ, and was chairman of that organization for three terms. He made donations to humanitarian causes, he gave money to politicians, and his brother Peter served two terms on the board of directors of the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association. So you might be thinking now, how on earth could this guy also be involved in a massive scam? Madoff was first investigated in 1992, but it wasn't until the 2000s that subsequent investigations by private firms found what they called inconsistencies that looked like fraud. Investigators, for years, had been saying that the gains Madoff claimed to be making just didn't look possible. In fact, for years, financial analyst Harry Markopoulos had been telling people something just didn't add up, and embarrassingly for them, the Securities and Exchange Commission ignored him, even when he went back numerous times with more evidence of what looked like a scam. 
He wasn't the only person that didn't trust the numbers, however, and many people did refuse to do business with Madoff. But how did Madoff get hold of people's money? What he had is called a Ponzi scheme, which, simply put, is a scheme that offers huge returns on investments. It was named after Charles Ponzi, who said that if you gave him some money, he'd give you back 50% more in just 90 days. Sounds great, but what happens is that you pay off these first few people, and word gets around that indeed there is a huge return, and soon many people want to get in on the act. You keep taking new money and pay off old investors with that cash while expanding. The problem is, you aren't actually making any money. Obviously, if all the big investors demand their cash back, you'd be in trouble. But what you do is convince them to keep their money invested as the return will later be even bigger. It's said that Madoff, with his closest staff, manipulated trade reports with a computer program while they also created bogus stocks that seemed to give high returns. On paper, to the undiscerning eye, it looked like he was making money. The poop hit the fan for Bernie when his clients wanted back, in total, $7 billion, and he said all he had of their money was between 200 and 300 million. This market maker with a good reputation who had sat on the board of NASDAQ had all this time just been enticing people into a scam. It's thought he had thousands of investors, and in total they lost about $65 billion. It's also said Madoff himself made around 20 billion, or thereabouts. Apparently, when he was confronted by his sons, Andrew and Mark, he admitted to them that he had been running a Ponzi scheme. He said that everything was just one big lie. The sons knew nothing about the scam, although Madoff's brother, Peter, was involved. This wasn't easy for the sons, and they both died soon after, with Mark taking his own life and Andrew dying of lymphoma. What's amazing is how candid and cold Madoff was after he got caught, once stating, I certainly wouldn't invest in the stock market, I never believed in it. He also once admitted that he was surprised that he had gotten away with it for so long. Madoff called the investigators useless, saying, I was astonished, they never even looked at my stock records. Many of those who lost money won't get much, or anything, back, but in 2017 the US government promised 24,000 victims that a total of $772.5 million dollars was to be shared among them. Madoff was arrested and charged with securities fraud on December 11, 2008. His bail was set at $10 million, and he had enough cash to pay for that. He was kept under house arrest for a few months until a judge revoked the bail, stating that Madoff was in fact a flight risk. He was sentenced to 150 years in jail in 2009 at the age of 71. If he behaves well, he'll get out on November 14, 2139, at the ripe old age of 201. That's not going to happen, of course, and it seems the trickster may have got his comeuppance. He was sick on many occasions in jail due to stress, and was also attacked by inmates. Others say that the attack was for some reason made up, and it is far from the truth. This might just be the case, seeing that in a letter to his daughter-in-law, Madoff said, They call me either Uncle Bernie or Mr. Madoff. I can't walk anywhere without someone shouting their greetings and encouragement to keep my spirit up. It's really quite sweet how concerned everyone is about my well-being, including the staff. What's quite amusing are reports by reputable media that while in prison, Madoff had used his talents to exploit certain markets. At one point, he cornered the hot chocolate market, said one man who'd been writing an audio series about Madoff, he added, he bought up every package of Swiss Miss from the commissary and sold it for a profit in the prison yard. He made it so that if you wanted any, you had to go through Bernie. So, there it is. The abridged story of one of the world's biggest con artists. The Dark Prince of Ponzi, the real wolf of Wall Street, and it seems now a shrewd prison peddler of Swiss Miss in his retirement. And while we can all agree that what he did was horrible, we can also all agree that if you're looking to create a powerful website for your business or hobby, you should be using Wix. With Wix, you know you're getting an amazing deal and an amazing website. The best part is, it's perfect for people who have no idea how to create websites. Whether you're a business owner, a professional designer, or even a professional website builder, Wix offers you true creative freedom when designing your website. Create an awesome website today and support the infographic show at the same time by going to wix.com slash go slash infographics or clicking the link in the description. What are your thoughts about the Madoff heist? Is he any more unethical than an ordinary house burglar? A bunch of old British men who committed a jewel heist? A common street thief that runs off with your iPhone? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called What Happened to Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!